Hi, everybody. It's Julie Ebersol for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a resist emboss or emboss resist. It doesn't matter which way you call it. It's going to end up the same <laughs> in the end. So <laughs> I've taken a piece of Canson watercolor paper. This is the Canson XL. It's 140 pound and this is a quarter sheet. So that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm going to prep it with an anti-static pouch because I want my embossing powder to stick only to where that sticky embossing ink goes. And I've put this onto a cushioned surface with a nonstick craft sheet because I'm going to be doing a little bit of messy stuff and I, I want it to clean up real easy. So I've taken the largest stripe or paint stroke image from a set called Abstract Paint Strokes, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp a striped background on this. Now, Versamark ink is an embossing ink. It's also a watermark ink, but it's clear. So it can be hard to see on camera, but I can see pretty well. You just tilt your paper in the light or if you need to, you know, squat down a little bit. Uh, get at eye level so you can see where those images are. But I'm not having any issues as I'm working here. But I know it's difficult for you to see what I'm doing on camera where those uh, images are getting stamped. But trust me, I've got it pretty evenly spaced. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not going to measure it or anything. And then because uh, I'm going to be using clear embossing powder, I need to use a colored pigment ink for stamping the next set of images. So on my second layer, I'm going to use this image that has these really fun random spots, dots, kind of wonky. And I'm going to ink up with the VersaFine uh, Claire in a Nocturne color. Now you could use any color pigment ink you wanted to, but because I'm going to be adding these other colors um, in the watercolor that goes over the top, I decided black would work the best for this particular end result. Now I'm going to take some clear embossing powder. This is regular grind. This one's by Wow. And I have the big jar because I use a lot of clear embossing powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's great and I love using it for, with all my colored pigment inks. Now, the nice thing about using a uh, clear embossing powder over this is all the images were stamped in uh, pigment inks and it's going to stick to that. But the great thing is if you use any different colors of pigment ink, they're all going to show through. So everything is going to show through this clear embossing ink and that's fine because of what happens next. So I'm going to heat everything up and I preheated my heat gun for about 30 seconds. And then I'm just going to carefully go over and make sure that I've got everything melted and smooth and shiny and glossy looking. If it looks sandy or gritty anywhere, then that means I missed a spot and I need to go back and heat it until it turns shiny, glossy, and raised looking. So you do need to make sure you've gotten all the spots. I'm tilting my paper there to make sure I got everything. Because if you try to add paint over something that hasn't been embossed, you're going to end up with a hot mess because it'll be all gritty, sandy, and it'll get all over your paintbrush and your colors and everything. And it's not good. So we're ready to go with the watercolor work that's going to go over the top and the embossing is going to resist it. And I'm using a water-based marker. This is the Art Graphic Twin and I love these colors. I've got those listed down in the description below. And these were pulled uh, for my project because they work with the Quietude color palette. And you'll see me uh, mixing down these colors. I've got a Pentel Aquash. This is the large one because I was going to go ahead and make some large swooshes of color and water where the watercolor paper is exposed. So the embossed areas are going to protect the paper so that if I get sloppy, and I am going to get sloppy as I'm doing this, it will resist that paint and the paint is only going to show up on those areas that are still exposed that didn't get covered or sealed in embossing powder. So I'm just going to continue on and I am not being really careful. I'm just kind of slopping that color around and blending it till it makes my eyes happy. In some cases, I will add more water and in other cases, I will add more ink. And I just like to play around with this. And, you know, once I'm happy with how it looks, then I stop. But I'm going to keep adding color and swooping things and mixing them around and one thing I did want to mention is if you need to add a more intense color because your brush was too wet and watered the color down too much, uh, you can take a dry spot on your palette. And I'm using a porcelain palette. You could use a plastic one if you have one um, or a piece of acetate if you don't have a palette at all. I love my porcelain one. I use it all the time and it just makes me happy because it's very sturdy and I can't knock it over. <laughs> And that's also why I use a Pentel Aquash because me and a jar of water are not always a happy uh, couple. So 
I get into wars with water and end up spilling things or knocking them over because I'm very clumsy. So that's why I like to use the Pentel Aquash because it's got that water reservoir built in and I can just squeeze it to get fresh water. And I've got a paper towel there so I can clean off my brush when I'm changing colors or if I want to blot anything off, I can do that with my paper towel. Now, if I decide I need even deeper, more intense color, uh, I can use that paper towel to actually wipe out uh, the area there on my porcelain palette that needs more marker color. And the great thing about doing that is that um, you always want to add those water-based markers. You want to scribble the color onto a dry area of your palette. If there's water or paint, wet paint already sitting there in that well when you add the water-based marker to it, what happens is the nib of the marker will soak up that water and it will dilute your marker. So you always want to make sure you're working with a clean, dry spot on your palette when you add more marker color. Now I added more paint and I'm going to let it drip and slide. But if you have some residual paint sitting there on the clear embossed areas, all you have to do is take your paper towel or take your paintbrush, uh, dry it off, dab it off a bit on your paper towel, and then you can just go and wipe away the residual ink that's sitting on top of those embossed areas. So it's all nice and clean and gives you that really cool contrasting effect where you see the layers of the images and then the painted areas, and it's just going to look uh, nice and clean, and you can see the separation of those elements. So now to create a focal that goes over the top, I didn't want to hide all of that beautiful resist work that I did. So I'm going to take a piece of vellum and I used a Hero Arts nesting or infinity circle die set and just cut a die uh, shape there out of the vellum cardstock. This is the Essentials by Ellen card, uh, vellum cardstock, and it's nice heavyweight. And I went ahead and stamped the word happy. This is from a set called Totally Random Sayings, Volume 2. And I'm just going to heat that again with clear powder over that VersaFine uh, Nocturne ink with my heat gun. And you do want to be careful when you're embossing on vellum because you don't want to get so close that you warp the paper. It's a little bit more delicate than regular cardstock is. Now to keep my watercolor panel uh, flat against my card surface, I kind of wallpapered the back there with some tape runner. <laughs> And you could flatten it in your die cutting machine by sandwiching it in between some paper, but I did that and I found that it kind of dulled the surface of all my embossing and then I had to reheat the embossing very gently to get it all glossy and shiny again, which is what I wanted. So just be aware of that, that if you flatten it through your die cutting machine, um, you're going to end up with kind of dull looking embossing images and it's okay if you don't mind that um, but if you wanted it super shiny and glossy and uh, reflective then um, you may need to heat it again with your heat gun just very gently very lightly just so it reactivates that high gloss finish on that clear embossing powder now I went ahead and mounted my vellum circle there to my card front with some uh, strategically placed thin 3D foam dots and that's because I don't want them to show and luckily because there's white background there they don't show through the vellum if they even if they're peeking out a little bit behind the letters because of where it ended up being mounted and then I already white embossed another greeting uh, onto a piece of black cardstock and then fishtail banner I'm going to fishtail banner uh, the ends of that so that it looks like an arrow on the front of my card. And then I decided I needed a little bit more support under that vellum circle. So I'm gonna add a couple more um, of those thin uh, 3D foam squares to give it just a little bit. It was just sagging and I hate it when I have saggage on, on my cards. <laughs> So going to get some additional support there. It's going to be hidden because I'm putting that little arrow right over the top. And that is also from that same set. And there you go. The card is finished and it came together so well. I love the effect of this abstract layering of images and resist of the watercolor. Thanks for watching. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up and you can see more of our papercraft videos by clicking on the photos below and by subscribing to the Ellen Hudson channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.